Hello, welcome to Escape the Box Piano, it's Dan here. And in this video I want to talk about the topic of cancelled music exams. One of the many things that's happened in the light of the COVID-19 outbreak globally, and it's pretty small in the grand scheme of things, is that music exams have been cancelled. Certainly here in the UK, the biggest exam boards, ABRSM and Trinity, have both announced that they're cancelling all of their practical exams, and they made that announcement last week, round about the 18th of March. I'm pretty sure the situation is the same in many other countries around the world. And for those of you that have been spending the last few months, possibly even a year, preparing for an exam that you were about to take in this exam period, that's rotten luck. That really sucks. Now, some of you got lucky. I know a student of mine was able to take their exam uh, maybe two weeks ago, but then last week, all further exams off. And in uh, an update on the ABRSM website, the CEO, Michael Elliott, has said that the, uh, the earliest that the next exams are going to happen, certainly for that exam board, are going to be the 1st of July. And honestly, that's a guess in itself. With so many industries being disrupted by everything that's happened, the reality is that nobody really knows when things are going to pick up again. So what do we do in the meantime? I've got four ideas of what I think you could be doing now uh, in, the, in the light of this situation. Okay, well the first thing that you could do is pretty obvious. You could simply wait until the next opportunity to take your exam. I think on balance of the four of my suggestions, this is probably my least favourite. There's no particular reason for education, for your education to stop, to be put on hold because of what's happening in the world. In fact, if anything, where you may be in quarantine or self-isolation for an unknown period of time right now, you could be using that to your advantage to increase, to, uh, to accelerate your learning. And where we don't know exactly when the next ex exams are going to happen, you could be waiting a long time. And the other thing, of course, is that you've been playing these pieces uh, that you've practiced now for so long, as I said, maybe months, maybe even up to a year. If all you do is just continue to practice those same pieces, there's a good chance you're going to get bored of them. Um, the musicality might start to get a bit stale. Maybe in a few months uh, you're not going to get as good a mark as perhaps you would have right now because you kind of worked to a peak with these pieces right now. And you definitely want to avoid that from happening. So let's move on to option two. So option two then would be to do what we just said in option one, which is to wait until the next opportunity to take that exam, but also in the meantime, add some recreational pieces on top of those pieces, the pieces that you're doing for your exam. Keep those kind of on a plateau, keep them serviced, keep practicing them, but add in some other stuff that you're going to enjoy. Think of a genre of music that you particularly enjoy and try and source some education, whether that's with a teacher that you work with, whether that's online or whether some from some books, and just find some other material that you can be playing. If you want some inspiration, there's a really good series of books I'd recommend by an author called Pam Wedgwood, and they go up to kind of the medium grades up to about grade, between grade four and five, and between is the key word here, because the series, the title of the series is called upgrade and it's specifically designed to be enjoyable material that kind of takes you in between the standard of the grade that you're at and the next one. So actually as well as playing just enjoyable pieces you are perhaps slightly upskilling your technique from where you currently are to let's say the next benchmark. Of course other great options to look for recreational pieces are online. Here on YouTube is a great resource. I don't want to plug my own channel but please don't go, do go and have a look at some of my other videos, see what perhaps you could learn here. Okay now let's have a look at option three. Okay option three then would be to uh, let's say cut your losses abandon the grade that you've been working on and move on. I think in itself I dislike that and would recommend comp against it in its entirety. It feels a little bit nihilistic to throw everything away. The other thing is that depending on where you are in your learning journey, 
there are uh, educational points in some countries. So in the UK, we've got UCAS points, which is um, to do with the education system. And I think from grades five, possibly six onwards, um, you can pick up UCAS points that count towards uh, perhaps uh, college entrance or university entrance. So you definitely don't want to throw those away. And of course, the only way you're going to get those points is by entering into and passing an exam. And if you are going to consider abandoning the grade, then perhaps one thing that you could do for yourself is to record yourself. So stick a video camera up just for, for your own posterity to remind yourself in the future of, okay, this is where I was at a point in time. And you can record your pieces, you can record some of the exercises. And if you have somebody musical in the family with you, you could even do some of the oral, perhaps sight reading tests, if you've got somebody else to sit there and kind of take you through that element. And that's kind of a, a nice personal keepsake, which is going to remind you of where you were right now before you then move on to the next thing. So then finally, let's take a look at the fourth option. Option four, you're still going to try and do your current grade at the next possible opportunity, but also in the meantime, you're going to take that opportunity to move on to the next grade. And I think that would be a commendable approach. You're certainly thinking, OK, I'm going to move on to the next level. Um, let's take a look at a couple of reasons why that might not be right for you. Uh, you should think about the phasing of the music publication books that come out. So what do I mean by that? For example, with ABRSM, they release their books on a two-year cycle. So the current syllabus right now is for 2018 to 2020. Now, technically, unless any changes are made by ABRSM, that means that the current books, if you pick up the next grade, the latest that you can possibly enter yourself and take those pieces will be about this time next year, so about March 2021. Now, let's say in the worst case scenario, you entered into that period and you then unfortunately failed that exam. To then take the exam again, you would have to learn a completely new set of pieces. And I would estimate that it takes on average, well, perhaps slightly less than average, about a year to learn to prepare for one grade. So if we think about the phasing of the ABRSM books, then we know, and again, unless ABRSM make any changes, that we are going to see the new books, the new syllabus, the 2021 to 2022 syllabus, released in about June this year. Could be worth hanging on until those books are released before you think, OK, let's move on to the next grade. And of course, if you're not doing ABRSM, if you're doing a different exam board, you should be looking at the phasing of their books. The other thing that you need to consider, of course, as well, is do you have access to your music teacher right now? Are they offering online lessons? Are you still physically able to see them? Because you need to think about yourself. Where do you get your motivation for learning from? If you are an incredibly self-motivated person, then this option could be perfect for you and you could just go ahead. If you need that extra encouragement, that guidance from a tutor, then again, it might be worth waiting until you've got better access to your teacher before you decide to push yourself for the next grade. And as a final thought, I would recommend that you keep an eye on your exam board's media. So keep an eye on their website, keep an eye on their social channels and just see what communications they're putting out. Uh, for example, I looked at ABRSM's Twitter in the last few days and they're kind of implying that they are investigating online technology as a vehicle for assessment. Now, I have no idea where that's going to go, but it's certainly an interesting idea and we should keep an eye on that and see where that goes in the future. Well, I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have, please do leave a like. Let me know what are you going to do? What, what are, have you already made your decision on uh, the direction that you're going to take? Share it with the community down below in the comments. Subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.